Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Broad Windsor in Dorset. It's located about seven miles north of Bridport and two and a half miles west of Beminster. And we're going to be walking a roughly five mile circular-ish route. <laughs> After exploring the village we'll uh, head south up to the top of Lewiston Hill, down to Buck's Head and then back along part of the Wessex Ridgeway for our return journey. And hopefully we'll get to see some stunning views along the way. Now I'm filming at the end of July. It is a glorious sunny morning. There are some clouds uh, predicted later on, but fingers crossed we should be okay. Perfect condition for a walk. Do come along with us. We'll start off our walk with a little wander around the village of Broad Windsor itself. The best place to begin is the church, which is just behind me. And what a splendid church it is too, the St John the Baptist Church. Its uh, origins uh, date back to the late 12th century, early 13th century. The South Arcade of the Nave is Norman and the North Arcade is 13th century. The tower was added in the 15th century. I think it's got six bells. But there was a big restoration in 1868 when the nave and aisles were extended and the chancel and north aisle rebuilt and the north vestry and porch added. The west doorway is from the 14th century. Well, we'll have a quick peep inside. Just on the left here is the font, which I believe is Norman. And there's the bell tower. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, six sallies. And a rather magnificent pulpit. And there's the chancel with a stunning stained glass window above the altar. And there's the organ on the uh, left hand side there. Oh, it really is a quite splendid church. I love the wooden beams in the ceiling there. Well just next to the church is the village hall called the Comrades Hall. Originally there was just a barn here and it was converted to a hall by members of the British Legion. That's how it got its name. And in 1952, the Legion returned the hall back to the original landowner, Lady Pinney, who then made a deed of gift of it to the parishes of Broad Windsor and Burstock. I think it was rebuilt in 1968. And then just opposite the village hall is the old school, which I think was built in 1835. We're just having a wander through the village. There's some gorgeous houses and cottages. And look at this. Little pump outside this one here, isn't that terrific? We'll continue my wander through the village. This fascinating house here is called Cross Keys House and it was one of five pubs in the village at one stage. It's now residential, we'll see there's a guest house sign outside, but it's got a terrific story attached to it. A chap called John Brown stopped off to get some change here on the 5th of July 1856 before going on to another pub and finally making it back to his house at Birdsmoorgate Crossroads which is to the west of here but just inside the Broad Windsor Parish. Now when he got home he had an argument with his wife Martha and she suspected him of being involved with another woman I think. Anyway they had a fight and uh, he took a whip to her and she fought back, hit him with an axe and he died. Well the house they lived in was right near the crossroads opposite what was once uh, the Rose and Crown Inn at Birdsmore Gate. If you look at the area today the house is long gone with uh, just the farm buildings on the site. Now Martha was tried for murder very quickly and was found guilty. She was the last woman to be publicly hanged in Dorset at Dorchester Jail on the 9th of August 1856. <laughs> Although it seemed like self-defence to me. Now the hanging was actually witnessed by the novelist and poet Thomas Hardy. He was 16 years old at the time and it contributed to his inspiration when he wrote Tess of the D'Urbervilles 35 years later in 1891. Now just to the east of the village is Broad Windsor Cricket Club 
established in 1923. They play in the Mid-Wessex League, but they only got their ground here in 1965 in front of Broadwindsor House, the old vicarage, which I think is now a care home. But in 2007, uh, the Wisden Cricket Almanac produced a calendar of the uh, UK's loveliest cricket grounds, and Broadwindsor was in the top five. And I can understand why. Wow, how about that for a statue in your front garden? Very impressive. I think this looks as though it's the centre of the village, and this is the only pub that's still around still, the White Lion. It's a 17th century building. I think it's now a community pub. Another lovely little pump in the village. Now, just opposite here is the old George and King Charles cottage. Now, the story behind this, Charles II, of course, was defeated at the Battle of Worcester on the 3rd of September, 1651, and he made his escape through the West Country. Uh, he tried to get a ship to France from Bridport to the south of here, but the port was full of roundheads getting ready to sail for Jersey. So he tried to get back to a safe house at Trent, which is not too far from here in the northeast. But he got lost and uh, decided to stay overnight here on the 23rd of September 1651 at a pub that was then called the Castle Inn. Now, unfortunately, that night, a constable and 40 roundheads on their way to Bridport decided to stay in the pub as well. Now, fortunately for Charles, their attention was diverted by one of the women travelling with the soldiers going into labour, allowing him to escape the next morning to get uh, to the house at Trent. We're looking at the building today. The original Castle Inn was destroyed by a fire in 1856, but it was later rebuilt as the George Inn with the cottage next door. Obviously, it's no longer a pub now. I think it's a, a holiday cottage. Now, Historic England state uh, that King Charles Cottage was built around about 1800 uh, using uh, the core of a 16th and 17th century building. But uh, the website of the uh, holiday cottage that's here states that King Charles slept in this very building. There's the rather sweet Broadwindsor community stores. It's been running since 2012 and it occupies what used to be the old telephone exchange in the village. Now, I think, but I'm not 100% sure, this might have been the fifth pub in the village, although technically I think it's at the little settlement of Hersey, and it was called the Butcher's Arms. As I said, I think it is. It, it certainly appears on a 1901 map, and um, I think this is it. Interesting, on the, just above the door, or where the door used to be that's been bricked up, built 1307. Incredible. We're just making our way sort of out of the village on the western side. So pretty. Look at this gorgeous house here. And we're actually on a little tiny bit of the Monarch's Way, which is that 630 mile long distance path representing the escape route of Charles II from the Battle of Worcester in 1651. And it runs from Worcester to Bristol to Yeovil and Shoreham. Right, so we need to look out for this house here. Yes, the old toll house. And hopefully there should be, ah, there we go, a sign, Lewiston Hill, three quarters of a mile. And this uh, property here called the Oaks, I think this is what was once the fifth pub in the village, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, I tell you what, it's a quite glorious morning at the moment. So we're heading out into the countryside, leaving Broad Windsor and heading towards Lewiston Hill, going through a, a field. There's some sheep in it, so uh, I'll have to keep Logan on a lead. Just a little pit stop to show you where we've been and where we're going. So behind me here 
as broad Windsor to the north. Of course, we will be coming along here on the return journey. And in front of me is the path to Lewiston Hill. So we're going to continue our way southwards, uphill, along a path that goes through fields to uh, Lewiston Hill. It's the highest hill in Dorset at 915 foot above sea level. And for many years, it was thought that uh, Pilsen Pen, just to the west of here at 908 was the highest, <laughs> until they remeasured Lewiston Hill. Well, we still haven't actually made the, the foot of the main part of the hill yet, but there's a lovely bench here. And what a superb view looking to the north with broad Windsor down below and the rolling Dorset landscape beyond. You just have to sort of stop for five or ten minutes and take it all in. Well, we've now reached the sort of bottom of the top bit of Lewiston Hill, if you see what I mean. Basically, we're now going to go into a little wooded section and it gets a little bit steeper from now on. Well, just as you enter the woods here, there's this sort of, uh, well, you describe it as a sort of memorial board to a lost pilot. Um, I'll see if I can put some photos up. It's got sort of a reflective uh, screen to it so uh, it's difficult to, to read with the sunlight but it's a memorial to a chap called Jean de Cloé I think that's how you pronounce it he was a, a Belgium pilot and on the 15th of March 1942 he was flying a brand new Spitfire to Bolt Head near Solcombe in Devon and as part of a, a mission to relocate planes further west to protect them from German raids well tragically he met thick fog and crashed into the side of the hill and he lost his life. But the accident was sort of hushed up and the memorial was only recently put up here following research by a local chap. The propeller of the stricken aircraft is at uh, Beminster Museum and I think the actual crash site is about 500 yards uphill, I'm not sure. Anyway, we now need to start heading uphill along that path in that direction. Well, just about halfway up the last bit. I thought I'd just stop just to show you how steep it is and what an excellent place to build an Iron Age hill fort. I'll tell you a bit more about that when we get to the top. Well, we've made it to the top. So let me tell you a little bit about the Iron Age hill fort that was here. It's about two and a half acres in size and uh, defended on the southwest and southeast side by a very steep slope. And uh, on the north side, well, that had a ditch with just one rampart. It was more of a place of refuge because, well, there were at least three other forts on this western side of the Marshwood Vale. There was Pilsden Pen, which of course we've been up and had an exploration around Lambert's Castle and Coney's Castle. But sadly, there's been a lot of gravel extraction here and timber removal, and that makes it difficult to make out a, a lot of the earthworks. And apparently it uh, gets covered in bluebells in the spring. And of course, uh, there's that famous Lewisden poem published in 1788 by William Crow. 
<laughs> just looking down the side, this is on the sort of southwestern side of the fort. You can see how steep it is. Quite easy to defend from up here, that's for sure. had a little bit of an exploration around the uh, hill fort. It's um, different from say the hill forts such as Maiden Castle and Hod Hill and Pilsden Pen which are all very open. Uh, this fort is surrounded by trees so what it means is as far as view is concerned you tend to get glimpses um, from time to time. So for example just over my right shoulder you can see the landscape to the south and I can just about make out the sea in the far distance but what we're going to do now is now head south downhill and go along the bottom of the southern side of the hill. We might get some slightly more panoramic views there. Look at these, uh, this row of beech trees. It looks like they've been planted alongside an old boundary bank. So atmospheric with the uh, sunlight uh, creeping through the foliage above. Oh, I'm really starting to get some quite magnificent views coming downhill. This is looking over to the mm, southeast, I suppose. I love that row of trees that's going across the field there. I'm not sure exactly what they are, I can't tell from here, but uh, it looks very pretty, that's for sure. We've now come off the sort of wooded section and now going to head westwards and uh, from here a fantastic view of Pilsden Pen with the Iron Age hill fort at the top and we've done a walk there in the past. If you haven't seen that video do check that one out. Unfortunately I have a slight problem with one of my shoes. <laughs> I think it might be time to replace those somehow. <laughs> Sad, it's like an old friend. In fact, now we're on the southern side, you get a much better uh, sort of perspective of uh, the hill and the hill fort here. And you can see the trees there. We've come down a path that's sort of gone through that avenue of trees on the right. We're just passing through a farm, and I've noticed a sign over there Welcome to Sirencester. Roman and medieval market town. Well, either that sign's in the wrong place or we've certainly gone the wrong way. A oh, beautiful row of what well, I presume must be farmyard cottages looking splendid in the sunshine today. Well, another little pit stop. Again, just to take in the, the view from the south of Lewiston Hill. Looks like there's some of those Highland cattle out in the field. And so we're going to continue heading westwards, slightly uphill, and then we're going to join, I think it's the Wessex Ridgeway, and then we'll actually be heading back up Lewiston Hill before dropping back down into Broad Windsor. <laughs> Oh wow, I thought we'd get some panoramic views 
on this side of the hill. So there's Pilston Pen, my, uh, well, certainly one of my favourite Iron Age hill forts in the county. And then just panning across and, uh, and just about see the sea through the, the gap there. And it's so peaceful today as well. Oh, I tell you, this walk keeps coming up with surprises. A quite enchanting little pond in front of me, absolutely jam-packed with lilies. And I can see loads of dragonflies above the surface there. So pretty. Well, we're only a few weeks away from Logan's favourite time of year when all the blackberries come out. I think it's going to be a good year. And uh, all the bees are enjoying those flowers. There's loads of butterflies along here. Um, I don't know if it's coming across on the, the camera. But, um, beautiful part of the, uh, the walk. I get the feeling that not too many people come along here. I mean, so far, I don't think we've met one other person out on the walk. We really have had it to ourselves. Well, we've made it up onto the top of a ridge and this is as far west as we're going. It's some fantastic views looking over to the north. So now we're going to start heading eastwards back up Lewiston Hill and we're going to be joining a section of the Wessex Ridgeway which is that 136 mile long distance path that goes from Marlborough in Wiltshire to Lyme Regis on the edge of uh, the sort of Dorset Devon border. Oh wow I think this is the best view that we've had so far looking to the to the south it's always hard to put these uh, pictures into words I think it's Colmer's Hill I can just see the very top of the trees I should point out um, I say the path that we came along the bottom there there was a tiny bit that was quite muddy even in July so if you are doing this walk Make sure you've got a decent pair of boots. <laughs> And here we are back at that memorial plaque. So that means we just have to turn left here, back to Broad Windsor. And the good news is it's downhill all the way. Well, sadly, the pub doesn't open till five o'clock and it's only just one o'clock now, but fortunately the village shop is open. So it's a time for a steak slice and a Coke and also uh, an Evershot Eccles cake. Evershot isn't too far from here. Right, do you fancy a bit? <laughs> well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here at the top of Lewiston Hill, the highest hill in Dorset, with some quite glorious views to the south. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks, and that'll have uh, a copy of the map of our route on as well. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. <laughs>